finished Don Quixote and it was wonderful. I think I said everything about it really that I needed to say in the last vlog. Um, book two took a big turn. It continued to be hilarious, but it also turned into something very thought provoking and tragic. And uh, yeah, it was a great, I had a great time reading this. Several people have asked me what translation I'm using since I was happy with my translation and I haven't read it in the original language, so I don't know anything. But anyway, this is the Penguin Classic Edition and the translator is John Rutherford, Rutherford, <laughs> which uh, I googled and Google says, good, it's a good one. I do really, really recommend this book. There are some slow parts, there are some bits that feel very repetitive or feel like, yeah, we could have trimmed this down for sure. But it was so, it was so satisfying to read. I mean, it was hilarious, but it was also really, really thought provoking and I just enjoyed it so much. And if you think about it as two books, because that's what it is, book one was published 10 years before the second half of this, before book two. This is just two books that have been bound up into one edition. So if you think about it like that, then you're just reading two 400 page books. So read the first book, take a break, and then come back and read the second book, but do come back and read the second book. If you're gonna read it, I do recommend it. I do wonder, and again, we're keeping it all spoiler free always, but I do wonder how much of the ending was influenced by the fact that somebody published a second book out from underneath Cervantes. Um, and he was very upset about that. Like he did not appreciate somebody taking his work and then creating their own sequel for it. and not the sequel that he was actively working on and wanted people to be reading. Um, so he said in his note at the beginning of book two in his, in his preface that he was doing a certain something with the ending so that no one can do this to his work and to Don Quixote and Don Quixote's story ever again. And I do wonder if, what, if that never happened to Cervantes, what would the ending have been? What would, what was the ending that he initially had in mind? Or was this it? Because I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the ending. I mean, I have many thoughts, but uh, I do wonder how much of that ending was influenced by what was done to this story before he could get book two out. But anyway, I have started The Adventures of Amina al-Sarafi. So this is, I'm only three chapters in so far, so I'm very, very early on. Um, this is a story following a woman named Amina who is, she's 40 years old, she's got a daughter, she's got a life. She once was a notorious, infamous, well-renowned, her name shook people in their boots kind of kind of pirate queen um and now she's she's retired she's not a part of that work anymore she's a family woman now but she gets bribed slash blackmailed into doing one last job and so now she's trying to gather her crew to do this one last job that will supposedly be such a great payday that she'll never have to work again and her family will be taken care of so as far as the beginning goes, it's a really interesting premise and I'm always happy to have some sort of nautical fantasy adventure. I love that Amina is a mom. I love the way um, Shannon Chakabordi is writing her um, is writing her love for her daughter and uh, the way she relates to the world as a mom. I'm really loving that, but I am pretty tired of the I was once someone I was once this morally gray person who did a lot of things in my day and now I'm not now I'm making better choices for my life and the people in it like I'm kind of tired of following that person because to me it's like it's like it's making a character morally gray without actually having to write them doing anything morally gray which is boring and it's like I'm joining a character at the most boring part of their life. Like I missed all the fun stuff. I want to go on the adventures with you. I want to see you pirate. Now, because she's trying to get her crew back together or at least pieces of her crew back together and go on this one more adventure, I'm hoping that I'm going to get to have some fun. So I'm not completely sold because oftentimes with this sort of beginning, I just feel like, yeah, you can talk about your dark past, you can talk about how infamous you are, you can talk yourself up, but have you done anything? Like, have I seen you do anything in the book? Like, that's the vibe that I get a lot of times with this kind of setup. 
but since we're doing one, we're going on a new adventure, I'm hoping that I'm, that's not gonna be what's gonna happen. I'm gonna love this, it's gonna be amazing. Nautical pirate adventure. I'm excited. Anyway, welcome to the vlog. 300 pages into Amina. I planned on checking in at the halfway point, but I accidentally blew past it. This is such a fast read, way faster than I expected. I've heard people describe this book as a fast-paced book, and I would I would reject that. I would I would dispute that, despite what I just said. I actually think this is a super slow burn, especially at the beginning, though it has picked up here in the last couple chapters that I've read. Uh, but the first half of the book is very slow burn, yet so readable, compulsively readable. Like, I would say that now the plot is moving very quickly, but in the beginning, the plot really didn't move. It just has an extremely readable style. But I expected this to take me the full week, even after I finished Don Quixote and I was going to devote all my time and attention to this, I expected this to take me the full week and it's just, it's not going to. It has a very addictive quality to it where even when, even, even though I have quite a few nitpicks about this book, I never want to stop reading it and I'm probably, I'm probably going to have this done within a day or two. So I was right in my initial kind of complaint about us being at past, whoa, past the most interesting part of Amina's story. I have this, I have this qualm and it's, it's very much a me thing. So allow me to complain a little bit, but it's probably something that no one else would care about or notice if I wasn't so annoying and didn't point it out to you. But I don't like characters. I don't like it when books have characters that were once a great legend before the story started. And then the story starts and then they talk themselves up constantly and they talk about how legendary they were, but on page they never quite meet their actions never meet their talk. Um, and I believe that Amina was once one of the most notorious legendary pirates on the seas and now she's 40 and a mom and, you know, still awesome and still getting up to some incredible, exciting, fun, terrifying, horrible adventures in this book. But there's a lot of lines that constantly remind me <laughs> that we're dealing with a certain character type that I personally just would prefer to read I would have preferred to re have read her like 20 years ago. Um, and and the stuff like she watched somebody die and she was horrified by it. And it was a very gruesome death. And she talked about how really she's never, she calls herself a pirate throughout the, this entire book and everybody calls her a pirate. And I think on a technicality, that's exactly what she is. But she says in on page, she says, I was never really, a pirate. I was never into the piracy side of piracy. I was more of a smuggler and would dip into piracy every now and then if I have to and if the, if it seemed like I had no other choice. So like she has killed but she doesn't have a taste for it. She, she wouldn't ever choose that. Um, there's another scene where she said, oh, I, psh, I've, I've pickpocketed dead people all the time. I've lifted stuff off of dead people. Sure, if I don't have any problem stealing from the living, why would I have problems stealing from the dead? But this particular situation, mm, don't like it, not gonna do it. And she even kind of scoffs at herself and she's like, way to have, develop a morality around stealing from the dead now, Amina. And like, there's little lines throughout this book that are like that, where it's like reminding me, oh yeah, I used to do that kind of stuff, but not today. My morals are different today. And there is something really valid about following someone at a point in their life where they're no longer at their most daring and now they've developed maybe a stronger moral sense and uh, have a different set of values that drive them. There's something very valid about that. But I mean, I was promised a pirate adventure, so. <laughs> it is still, don't hear me wrong, I am, I'm having a really, it's a really fun time. I just have to shift my expectations because I'm here thinking, oh cool, I'm following a pirate queen. And me, who I've been doing way too much pirate studying lately, reading pirate nonfictions, listening to the Pirate History Podcast, doing a bunch of independent research on pirates. I'm so in the piratey mood <laughs> that I, going into this book, I, I had a, I had the wrong set of expectations. So I've shifted expectations and that's okay. Sometimes you have to do that. And I'm just enjoying this for what it is, which is an adventure. It's a fun adventure with a lead who will still do her pirating ways. She'll still do 
plenty of, of morally questionable things and still gets up to her fair share of shenanigans, but just has a stronger moral dri drive than I was going into this expecting. The side characters in this book, and Amina's great, Amina's a great lead, but the side characters in this book are really the drive. Uh, we have a poisoner who's hilarious and enjoys her craft far too much. We have a, hmm, someone that I probably don't need to talk about at all, but someone who entered the story looking like he was gonna be an antagonist and still is a bit of an antagonistic force, but is hilarious and adds the best dynamics to the crew. And really everybody, we have a kitten that's there for good luck and does nothing and I love it. Uh, I just, it's, the whole crew really is wonderful. And there's also some really good conversations being had within the book too. Just generally, I'm having a really good time. It's not a new favorite for me at this point in the story, but I'm having a great time and I, it's such a fast, fun read. It's not fast, it's not fast paced. It's just gobble worthy. Oh, I hate that. It's bingeable. Ha! Those are the words. I'm having a good time. I'll see you when I'm done with it. Amina is done. So how do I feel about this book? I have such mixed feelings about, about this book. So many pros, so many cons. Um, let's, let's start with the good. I thought that it was a really fun adventure. I thought that it was really easy to read, way faster of a read than I thought it was gonna be. Um, just never really wanted to put it down, even when there were things happening that I wasn't always enjoying. I never wanted to stop reading it. Um, just a fun, fun ride with great side characters that I really enjoyed reading from and that I really uh, loved following and getting to know better. Some things that I didn't like, as I already said, I don't enjoy following characters whose legend way overshadows their actual actions within the story, um, unless it's done intentionally, unless it's done kind of uh, with with the author and us kind of in the loop of this character. It has an inflated ego and needs to be knocked down a peg or, you know, they're living this kind of illusion of themselves and uh, the whole world sees through that illusion. Like that kind of playing with that character type is fun, but one that feels not self-aware where the characters like built up to be you know, this incredible character and they just on page aren't that. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> also near the end, there were some really big um, series of conveniences, coincidences, leaps that happened that uh, you, I had to do some serious suspension of disbelief of like, oh wow, you survived all that, huh? And it got you exactly there, which led you exactly to this, whoa! Amazing. Even the time that it was set in, it's set in the 12th century, and it just didn't feel like the 1100s. Like, I mean, this is obviously a fantasy, but it's not alternate history. It's historical fantasy. And I, it just felt like the way the dialogue was written, how familiar uh, and casually characters spoke with one another, even the very casual narration style and the, 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 the devices used to tell this story, um, certain slang or swear words that were used or insults that were used that just kept pulling me out because I was like, well, that doesn't sound like the 1100s. I don't know. I have a lot of small complaints that kind of add up to, ah, uh, not my favorite. I typically don't rate books, I don't enjoy rating books, uh, but I do actually think that it would be useful for this one in particular because I have so many pros and cons because I genuinely had a great time reading it. It was so much fun. But there's also a pile of things that irritated me <laughs> as I read it or that kept pulling me out of the story as I read it. So I think like a, a solid 3.5 is a fair, assessment or a fair um, reflection of how I felt about this book. Fun ride, had a great time, a lot of things that didn't work for me. I mean, I love a good nautical adventure with a crew of pirates. There were just a lot of things that made it not my nautical adventure, but this is so many people's favorite book of the year. So again, I don't like being the negative person in the room. So still check it out if you were looking to check it out. It just didn't suit my taste 
as well as I, I was hoping it might. I have read three more volumes of Yona. My friend and I, uh, my friend that's buddy reading this series with me, she and I have decided to try to pick up the pace, not pick up the pace as in like how rapidly we read it, but how many volumes we're reading a week to finish it out by the end of this month so that um, she can start Monster with me at the same time that I'll be reading it with Philip. So I've read three volumes of Yona so far and I am still enjoying it. It's still a great time. <laughs> I feel like one thing that I continually say as I talk about this series is that I don't care about the wider world issues. I don't, it's not that I don't think they're done well, it's just that there's a lot of characters in the series, there's a lot of uh, pieces that are moving, a lot of different groups of people that are being introduced that I just want to hang out with the Happy Hungry Bunch. That's really all I care about. And as the series is progressing, the Happy Hungry Bunch is meeting more conflicts. They can't just be a happy-go-lucky group of friends and, it, you know, more is being introduced. And I have not needed the more, but I will say with these last, especially this last volume, I'm not feeling that way anymore. I'm actually extremely invested in it because it's finally all kind of coming to a head and it's all, I'm having more questions than I am answers in, in the best way where I, there's a lot of things <laughs> that I want to see unfold. So I'm finally invested in that wider story more so than I am in the closer, ah, no, as much as I am in the closer story. There's still some things that irritate me about the series. Uh, the, the, one of the antagonists that's been present within the last several volumes is very mustache twirly. The guy in the black robes, the priest, he's just, he's very mustache twirly and I don't think that he's interesting at all. Um, there's a thing that's happening right now with ha with Hack, 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 I don't know how to say his name. There's a thing that's happening right now with him that I just feel like, does it make sense? Why is this the route that you're going to try to, I mean, I realize that you're backed into a corner. I realize that you can't get to the person that you want to get to and you can't accomplish the things that you want to accomplish because of the, manip the manipulation and the things that are going on. But why are you doing this? This doesn't logically work. So I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop and we're, I'm waiting for the other side of his plan to be revealed because right now I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, what are you doing? But I'm very invested in what's happening. The newest antagonist that's been introduced is manipulative and horrible and evil and I hate him. Not in a mustache twirly way, just in a, oh, you're very good at what you're doing, stop it, kind of way. So I'm having a, I'm having a good time with Yona. Also, my Malazan fans, thanks for being patient with me. Uh, I am sitting down right now, after I finish this clip, to discuss Midnight Tides. That video is going to be up on Tuesday. So it's fine. I'm sorry it's taking me so long. Um, because I finished Amina way faster than I thought I was going to, I've already started my next book and that is The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu and I'm already really, really invested in it. So I'll be talking to you about that next week. I'm also going to be at the beach next week, which is why there's no b-roll in this. There's no interludes in this particular vlog. I'm sorry about that. We have been uh, preparing to leave pre-filming so that there will be videos up while I'm gone all that jazz and I just, we haven't gotten out on any hikes, so I haven't recorded any hikes because apparently that's all my interludes are. <laughs> but I'll make up for it next week. There will be beach inter interludes, which are the best kind of interludes, I think. Anyway, this week I read uh, The Adventures of Mina al -Sarafi. I read three more volumes of Yona. I finished Don Quixote and I started The Grace of Kings. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you've read some awesome things. I'll see you again soon. Bye.